Hello again everyone, James here again. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about something I like to call bathroom sticker theory. Now, if you've ever played in a band that plays small clubs or bars, or even if you've just attended these shows, then you probably already get an idea for where I'm going with this conversation. When you go into the bathroom stalls at these music venues, or maybe even the club walls, depending on how the rules are, you see them covered in stickers for bands that have performed there in the past. And you've probably spent a little bit of time looking at all those logos, looking at all those stickers printed up at the million different sticker sites that exist, all from groups who are hoping to one day become a big household name. But there's one thing that the vast majority of these stickers have in common, and that is the fact that none of those bands ever actually end up making it. And just to be clear, when I talk about making it in a video like this, I'm referring to musicians who rise through the ranks. They're no longer hometown heroes or even regional heroes. They are groups or artists that everyone knows, names that are spread around the world, people who get record deals, who tour constantly, who more or less become full-time musicians. So bathroom sticker theory is pretty straightforward. It's the idea that if you're an artist who's so worried about getting famous or getting people to know your name that you're willing to just slap your sticker anywhere hoping that it will maybe make a difference, then you're not really at the level of professionalism needed to build a lasting career. I mean, take a second to think about the other businesses and corporations that you see advertising in venue bathrooms, or any bathroom for that matter. Do you see Target, McDonald's, Walmart, any of these big brands advertising in bathrooms? Do you see any of the bands that you love advertising in bathrooms? I mean, have you ever been to an arena, been inside the stall and seen a big sticker for your favorite rock band or your favorite pop star coming to town? You may see a flyer because of how the venue chooses to promote, but I'm talking advertising from the groups that you love the most, from the brands that you love the most, from really anything that you really care about. Do you see them advertising in bathroom stalls? Now I'm willing to bet that your answer was no, because the things that you love, the brands, companies, artists, groups, and so on, they understand that marketing is not about casting the widest net possible. It's not about just throwing your logo anywhere that it'll go and hoping that maybe, possibly, hopefully, somebody sees it and decides to listen to your music or check out the thing that you're trying to make. That's just not how marketing funnels work, and that's really at the heart of all business endeavors. You're trying to get the attention of people and slowly pull them into being a longtime customer of your product. The musicians and products you love also know a thing or two about brand association that is not hitting home with the people who choose to plaster their stickers in these locations. After all, let's think about the typical club bathroom. Maybe it's clean at the start of the night, but as the night goes on, it gets increasingly filthy and the walls start to drip sweat and everything is wet and it isn't really anyone's most desired place to be. So why on earth would you want somebody to associate seeing your branding or the album news that you're just now sharing with that setting? Why do you want that to be the mental image that's in their mind when they think of your music or whatever it is that you're trying to promote? You see, bathroom sticker theory tells us that people who are concerned about getting their name in places like punk rock bathrooms are more concerned with people just seeing their logo than actually understanding how marketing and branding works. After all, just because music fans are going to a club where your sticker's on one of the walls doesn't mean that they are potentially a fan for you. And even if they are, you don't really think that people are gonna make a note of the sticker they see in the bathroom and then go home and then Google the name of that band because they're thinking about how cool that sticker was they saw in the dingy punk bathroom in between their favorite band sets, right? Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Marketing and success in the music business today is about finding your audience under very specific means. You wanna understand who they are, where they go, what kind of products that they love, what kind of shows they like to experience, and then take it upon yourself to be actively marketing to those communities. I mean, if you wanna promote at or around a show, why not go to the show yourself or set up a street team around the community of fans that you already have and empower them to go to shows to promote on your behalf, to hand out flyers, to hand out samplers, to hand out business cards that have links to your social media profiles. I mean, literally any of those ideas are better than just slapping a sticker in a bathroom stall and thinking that you've done something because all you've done is created more work for a janitor or a venue staff member later on down the line. You don't want people to think of bathrooms when they think about your music. I mean, I'm gonna guess that. There may be an artist out there who's like, I want people to think about the, I make bathroom music. And if that's you, then more power to you, slather those stickers wherever you get the opportunity. But for the most of you, I'm gonna guess that you want your music to be associated with the aesthetics or themes of what you write about, about you know endless summer and falling in love and getting through heartbreak or getting out the aggression that you feel within or dealing with your trauma or dealing with your demons or whatever it happens to be. And 
99% of the time, none of those things take place in a public restroom. So don't worry about promoting there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if you want to try and maybe you're thinking that it's just fun to slap your sticker in a venue, but keep in mind next time you see these places where people are just slathering their stickers or their logos or scribbling on the wall information about their band, try to take stock of how many of them are actually doing something that you want to repeat in your own career. Because if the answer is none or virtually none of them, maybe it's not the right thing for you to do. Maybe you're already on the right path. Maybe you're already doing something better and more meaningful for your career and your time would be better spent engaging with your fans on a one-to-one -one basis. And I know that some people are gonna say that I think way too much about the stickers in punk rock bathrooms, but I do think that they are indicative of the overall behaviors of a musician. They tell you how the person thinks about their music and how they think about marketing and branding, and all of that adds up. They're all little pieces of a much bigger puzzle that ultimately paints the picture of your career. So as you go forward, Think about these things. Be aware of how you're presenting yourself, where you're sharing what it is you do, and how people are receiving the way that you choose to promote yourself, because it all matters in the end. And if you want even more information on these ideas and more in the future, please click the subscribe button down below because that's why Music Biz exists. We're here to help you understand the music industry, the emerging trends, the breaking news, and all the advice that will help you have a successful career. So if you haven't done so already, click that button. And if you have, well, then you have my sincerest thanks. Your support makes this show possible. I'll be back soon with more content. And while I am gone, please, no matter what, take care of yourself because you deserve it.